Hi, we're back. This time we brought dessert. Our favorite boba place is a place called Blackbird Seattle. You know it's in Bellevue. And my favorite drink there is a grapefruit slushy. Um, I like it because it's a little bit bitter. I get less sweet. And then they have um, these milky crepes. They're like thousand layer crepes. This is what you get, Oreo and that's chocolate. chocolate. You walk there with the kids about half a mile from our house. Then had to <laughs> bring it all back home for us. <laughs> you know how sad that is? <laughs> Walking back with cake in your hand. Uh, what's funny is his bus stop is in front. Like his, when he used to drop, take the bus to work, his bus stop is right in front of that store. So he would have to get out the bus at like 7 p.m. And it's like middle winter in Seattle. He had to buy me this drink and then walk home with it for half a mile just so I could ask him to drink at night. You can't even put your hands in your pocket. <laughs> Fucking sucks. <laughs> Okay, so we had some more questions. Um, one of them was, when are you having your fifth kid? <laughs> Ooh. You know what? Um, I was I was really against it, but like, I really wanted another girl. And so I was like, I would have another one if you could guarantee me it was a girl. But Listen, I'm that, four for four. That doesn't happen. So I guarantee you two it. boys, a girl, and a boy. I told you that sequence <laughs> happened in that sequence too, so. No. I wanted all girls, but I mean. If let's you do a poll. See, oh, whatever. Let's, let's do see, a poll. Let's see a baby bump. A poll of what? So about like six months along. You can see, yeah. Ask that question again in about six months, and then I'll have an answer. Right now, yeah, let's survive number four. <laughs> okay, so another question someone had was any advice I had as a mom for uh, new moms dealing with baby blues? I've, you know, obviously been through pregnancy and postpartum four times. Um, I think I did go through baby blues the first time, and probably the second time too, and I just didn't realize it at the time. Um, but it is a real thing. Yes. I'm looking for a straw. So rude. I, Where's a I, straw? Like I, I put away. Go through your thing. I'm, don't worry about me. Just I'm looking for a straw. Don't be married to a guy like him. That's not gonna help your, you. Um, but seriously, I mean, you know, first kids. I will say it's really hard to ask for help because you're really possessive of the baby. Um, you might not realize it, but you are, and you just don't like the way other people do things. But if you can, you know, accept help so that you take care of yourself. Like, I think given no medical issues, you babies will be fine, and moms need to take care of themselves. That means you need to eat, which is something I wasn't really doing. You know, I was, like, so worried about taking care of the baby. I was skipping meals, so I think you really need to eat. Accept help. Let the doctor know you're not feeling well. Um... Yeah, I don't, it, everyone experiences it so differently. And I think a lot of it has to do with your brain chemistry. Um, and some people are just gonna be more prone to it than others. I was probably really miserable for two years, the first two kids, um, until we made some life changes. And, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, someone asked, you, if you have advice for dads, I have a lot of advice for dads. I don't have advice for moms, but I have a lot of advice for dads, and I will share after he shares. Why don't you go first? No, go ahead. No, no, you go first. No, I'm just going to add on to what you said. Just say no, it. Why are you so self-conscious? What's what, the... So, so what, what advice do you have for dads? For what? With uh, new wives who just gave birth and, uh, like, how to deal with that situation. Mm. Yeah. Well... If you have one kid, you have nothing to complain about. I don't want to hear it. First. No, it's yeah. hard. It's not. No, it's not. Okay, we're not talking about the kids. We're talking about the mom. Okay. Like, wait. dealing with the, the mom's emotions. Oh, dealing with the mom. The mom's, like, you know, giving okay. birth the first time, having a new baby. Like, what advice do you have for dealing with the moms? Not the babies. Mm. Why did I agree to this? I don't know. It's a hard question. I don't. Okay, so I get about Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think dads, yes, it's your baby. Yes, it, it's your baby. Yes, but pregnancy and birth, I'm sorry, it's a 100% woman thing. Like, I'm sorry, the man is not on the table giving birth. It's such a traumatic experience. 
you know, my all my pregnancies went as smooth as possible. It's still so traumatic to your body to go through uh, mentally, physically. It's just something that we just endure by ourselves. And I think as a, to be a supportive husband, you just gotta take care of the mom. Like whatever you want, sorry buddy, like you just gotta wait. You just gotta wait until she's recovered. Um, that also means, you know, your wife, what she wants, it needs to be a priority over what your mom wants, which in a lot of Asian cultures, like mother-in-law and, you know, moms, they, as in like the moms of the, the wife and the mom of the husband, they have a big say. They want things a certain tradition. They, you know, they're nostalgic about their baby because now it's like their grandbaby. And I think that's a huge point of conflict for a lot of families that I hear about. Husbands, you you gotta advocate for your wife. You got to just know what she wants comes first, at least for the first like one month, at least. You know, like whatever your wife wants, she gets. She want the baby dressed a certain way, dress the baby a certain way. She want the baby like completely breastfed or like sleeping a certain way. Even though it's dumb as hell to you, don't matter. Just do it as long as it's safe. Whatever your wife wants, just do it. She's just been through so much that I think you just got to cater to her. And you, you, you know, she's going to deal with her mom, but you've got to be the person between you and your mom because you can't have your mom coming over, telling them how things are done, you know, criticizing your wife or anything like that. Like, it's not the time, at least for one month after they give birth. Right? Sure. Yeah. What she said. Yeah. It's true. I mean, it is. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I so. guess my only advice to add to that is I guess you're not above housework. Like, that's still going to need to get done. And if you expect somebody else to do that for you, yeah, you like like she said, she's at, she's gonna be out for like a month or two, so you gotta step up, you know. Well, it's, it's funny he said that because he actually grew up in a household that has a very traditional. Actually, I did too. Very traditional kind of like male female roles. Like men did certain things, female did certain things, and it's not like he knew this when I first gave birth. Well, this probably didn't come along until about I don't know, probably like a year into our you know being parents was. One day we were driving in the car and he, he, he was complaining to me how why the dishes weren't undone, why the laundry wasn't done. And he was like, you know, back, in his, back, back when he was a kid, you know, his mom and my mom did it all and they didn't complain. And like, why can't I do it? I don't understand what this is. No, I'm just, I'm just going quiet. Okay, okay. Okay? And, you know, one of the things I said was, bro, if you have the time to look and see that the dishes aren't done that the laundry isn't done it's like you have the time to do it like especially now with technology of like loading the dishwasher loading the you know the laundry machine like you can just do it in a minute it, it's not that hard um so yeah you you just need to step up i don't care what kind of roles you grew up with i mean it, he grew up and I grew up too where like, you know, women did everything, you know, I was full. My mom did everything for me. Like I never did dishes or cooked dinner until we like lived on our own. Um, and his parents had the same ideas too. And so he kind of grew up with the idea and it made us realize like, you know, you really <coughs> want to step in and help out. If you're not going to step in and help out, you better shut the hell up. Like you better not be like criticizing somebody else for not doing something if you're not doing it either. You know, it, it's one thing if like you're always doing the dishes and your partner doesn't and you complain about your partner not doing it, that's fine. But like if you not doing the dishes, you don't get to complain about other people not doing the dishes. Yeah, the other one is just shut up. Yeah, you, you can, <laughs> if you imagine this and you were to talk back to this, <laughs> You're going to lose. So just <laughs> nod your head. Yes, honey. And do it. Yep. Yes, honey. You're going to get pushed out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to go buy things. You don't know what they're called or what they're used for. But you're going to walk into the aisle of the store where you feel uncomfortable. Just got to do it. Yep. And like another thing I want to touch upon that I hear from a lot of people is, um, like I said, yes, it's both your babies. You know, both your families matter. Both your friends matter. But that week, two week after mom gave birth, we're we're a hot mess. We're like le we're like leaking liquid out of every hole of our body, like every hole you have, every crevice you have, every pore you have, you're leaking liquid out of it. So in terms of visitors, let mom decide. This is not time for like the frat bro 
reunion, okay? This is time for mom to invite whoever she wants to come over. If you have a frat bro reunion, because everybody's excited about the baby, it's phenomenal, I love that. Keep it at 15, 20 minutes, you know? Tell everybody ahead of time, like, you know, my wife, you know, she's breastfeeding or like, she's just, she's got to rest. She's just kind of messy. So come bring a snack, take a selfie with the baby, you know, and leave so that mom can rest. So that's our advice. Take it or leave it. You know, some of you guys not going to believe me now, but you're going to live through it and you're going to look back at it six months later and it's like, yeah. Take it. I'm kind of an expert at this now. Trust me. <laughs> I've done this a few times. I got this down to a science. Okay. 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 That's it for today. Advice on kind of postpartum care for mom. We'll be going through it in three months. Are you ready to do this again? <laughs> Enjoy your cake. Enjoy your boba. We'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>